This is my Ender 3 S1. I did a review on this machine and my biggest complaint was the PTFE tubing goes all the way down to the nozzle. Well, it turns out Creality has a kit to upgrade this thing with an actual heat break. So I'll show you how to install this on today's Film of Friday. Film of Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. Here's the complete kit. You have to assemble it, but it's pretty easy to do. This is the one I bought off of Amazon, but you can find it cheaper if you shop around. So the first step is to make sure you get the heat block on the right side. You want the side that's flat, and that's where you screw in the heat break. Screw it in until the threads are just flush with the top. Now screw in the nozzle from the other side, and then tighten the two against each other so they're tight. Just finger tight is fine for now. Next, slide in the heat cartridge until it's flush with the edge, and then tighten the grub screw to hold it in place. Add the thermistor cartridge to its spot and then add the screw and tighten this down until it's flush against the block but not too tight. Now I'll remove the assembly from the S1 printer, just four screws and this thing lifts right off. And then the next step is to remove the cabling. Just unlock the locks and pull it right out. I'll remove the hot glue from the connectors and then I'll remove the sock that's covering the current heat block. There's two screws that hold this to the main block. Save these two screws, I'll explain why in a minute. Then remove the connectors, and then there's a grub screw. Once that grub screw is loose, I can pull this whole assembly out. You can see the original on the left is much bigger diameter than the one on the right. That's because it has PTFE tubing going through it, where the one on the right is all metal. There's still a section of PTFE tubing inside this direct drive extruder, but it's not touching the hot zone, so we can leave it. We don't have to touch it. Now the reason I set aside the old screws is because they're longer than the ones that come in the kit. The ones that come in the kit are actually too short. I can barely get a thread started on these things, so I'm going to use the old screws instead. So this thing is tight against the PTFE tubing inside. I'll just tighten these two screws by hand, and then I'll tighten the grub screw next. And this will hold it all in place. These red wires are really stiff and are hard to get on the connector but I got them in place. And then the thermistor just pops into its connector and then I just made sure the wires were lifted up above the nozzle. I reinstalled the new heat block sock and this thing was ready to reinstall. Put it on the bracket and then those four screws go right back in. And then I just have to install the wiring connector through its supporting bracket and then into the connector and lock it in place. The S1 doesn't have a PID tuning menu and I don't want to hook up a computer. So there's a G code that I run it's right here, it displays a message, and then it does a 210 degrees, eight times cycle PID tuning. Then it stores the value in EEPROM, and then displays a message that it's done. I put it on an SD card, put it into the printer, and then pressed print, just like I would any file. Now it didn't display the messages on the LCD, but I could see the temperature changing up and down, up and down. It did it about eight times, and then it was done. The firmware is still limiting me to 260 degrees, but that's fine. I'm getting a full 260 now because the PTFE tubing is not touching the nozzle. PLA is actually a great test of an all-metal heat break. If it's not perfectly smooth or there's flaws, it'll stick. So I ran a CHEP cube, turned out fine. So now my Ender 3 S1 has a higher temp hot end. It can go above 260, but the main thing is the PTFE tubing is no longer touching the nozzle, so I can go to the full 260. To go beyond 260, I'm going to have to update the firmware, and I'll save that for a future video. It occurred to me this assembly is very similar to the heat break and heat block that's on an Ender 2 Pro, an Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, or Ender 3 V2. So could I install this on any of those machines? Well, it turns out the heat sink has a much bigger diameter hole than the heat break of this assembly, so it's way too loose. So that was a missed opportunity by Creality because they could have been selling this assembly as an upgrade to all Ender 3s. If you're looking at getting your own Creality Ender 3 S1, check out Creality3dofficial.com by Comgrow. They've got all the different S1s, including the base S1 that I just showed you with direct drive, auto level, and dual Z screws. They also have the S1 Pro, which has all those same features, plus a PEI bed and a high temperature hot end. They also have the new Ender 3 S1 Plus with a 300 by 300 by 300 millimeter build area. This looks fantastic. So check it out at Creality3DOfficial.com by Comgirl. 
If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way. And if nothing else, click on that Filament Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.